So let us breathe again. <laughs> and settle into a stillness in this silence. Know that you are settling into your chair. Your chair supports you, the floor supports the chair, and the earth supports the chair. So you can sit and release as you are sitting. Release into this time and this space where we are now as we join together in spiritual community and as we come as individuals with our own stories, our own past, our own future. And this morning we come together especially to release the year that is passing. To release whatever was in this year that is just ours to let go of now. Because it is. It has come to pass. And we are also here this morning to invite what will come to pass in the coming year. So let's take these thoughts of release and invitation into a couple of minutes of silence. As we return our awareness to this place and time, we know that the peace of the place we just were is accessible to us anytime we choose. Anytime we need a breath, we need a break, from whatever we find ourselves in the middle of, we can take that breath, we can take that breath <coughs> and that break and be in a place of peace and calm. This morning we give thanks for knowing that. We give thanks for the accessibility of calm in our lives. We give thanks for the year that is passing and for the year we are welcoming. And with that we say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> So this morning we have our burning bowl, our annual burning bowl celebration. Release the old, invite the new. You know, this burning bowl stuff goes way back. Burning is about purification. It really is about purification. And that's what we do when we release. We're releasing, we're also purifying. We're saying, you know, what is, what was this year, it is finished. It is complete. And it is pure in that sense. Even if our human eyes go, I wasn't so good. I wish I'd done that a little differently. It's complete. It happened. And carrying it around with us, especially if it's something we regret and we wish had not happened or we had not done, is not going to gain us anything, right? Do you ever have some days where you just kind of feel like this? Like you got a weight? <laughs> It's like if 
someone would just lift that weight off my shoulders, I would feel so much better. That's part of what we're here to do today, is to release that, whatever that is, and to go forward in new joy and new anticipation. This morning I was watching CBS Sunday morning and in a little spoken essay, one of the things that the woman said was, um, there are really only two ways to be interesting in the world. And that is to do things that are interesting. And another one is to be interested. To be interested, to be curious, to wonder, to be interested. And that really struck me, and she was actually talking in the context of how we seem to enter a generation where we post everything out there for the whole world to see, right? The newest color of the toenail polish or whatever it is. <laughs> And, and her word that she was talking about was um, oversharing, right? That that made the dictionary this year, oversharing. And she said, the thing is, people are no longer sharing information. They're sharing non-information, okay? Sometimes when we go a little beyond. So her point was, let's be interesting. Let's remember what interesting is. We can do interesting things, or we can simply be interested. Be interested in what other people are doing. Be interested in trying something new. Be interested in exploring something. So um, I really like that message this morning, which fits right in with this passage from Romans. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And Charles Fillmore used the word mind, much how we see it in biblical terms. Mind not meaning brain. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your whole self by the renewing of your whole self. So that's part of what we get to do here this morning. The burning bowl, Marianne Williamson says, is a holy ritual that joins heaven and earth together. Because we can take our earthly experiences, our earthly feelings, our earthly sentiments, and we can send the ashes will dissipate to the heavens and some will fall. We have a bowl outside right into that bowl of sand and the sand can go right back to the earth. So this, this idea that we can have in ourselves of joining heaven and earth through this process. We release to the purifying power of fire old unwanted conditions, patterns, beliefs, or experiences. Invite anything that gets in the way of realizing our true selves. This is loaded, right? This is a packed sentence. Purifying power of fire, old unwanted conditions. So first we need to decide, right? We need to decide, I don't want to carry that anymore. We can make a conscious decision, I don't want to carry that. Now one of the things we read, I believe this was uh, Charles saying this, that releasing in anger sometimes brings that thing right back around to us because we have a lot of energy still in that. So part of a burning bowl is releasing in gentleness, releasing in gentleness to let that go and dissipate so we don't have energy packed into it anymore. And that's something we can also bring to mind as we release this morning, releasing in gentleness. Whatever we did, whatever was ours, has been ours this year, it was ours. And we get to claim that. It was part of who we are in that moment. And we don't, for, our word is forgiveness, right? Who do we forgive first? Yourself. Right here. Thank you, Shane. Right here. The first person we forgive is ourselves. And that releases us to forgive others and other situations in our life. And doing that with gentleness, right? Handling ourselves with care. Old unwanted conditions, patterns, beliefs, or experiences. Patterns. You know any patterns that keep cropping up? <laughs> every, time this, every time this happens, I do that. Oh, oh, wait. We can change those patterns. But again, it requires a conscious choice to say, oh, oh, I'm going there, I'm going there. I don't need to go there. I can make a different choice. I can create a new pattern. 
Beliefs. Did any of you bring beliefs with you into Unity? Mm -hmm. That maybe at some point in Unity you said, this doesn't really serve me anymore. In fact, maybe it never did serve me. Okay, so some of those beliefs. And I find myself continuing to release those. I've been in Unity for 20 years. Yet I still find that I have some of those things that I brought with me previously from my early religious upbringing that come and get me. Mm -hmm. So it's a continual process of going deeper with that release or experiences. Does anybody have experience in the last year? Are you ready to be done with? Ready to be done with that experience and not do that anymore. Not do that again this year. Okay, so I see people nodding. I also see some people with pieces of paper. If, if at any time you want to start to jot some things down as your mind is triggered, you can go ahead and do that. You can spread papers all around and pens all around. And this is the paper we're going to burn. You can write on the front, you can write on the back, you can pick up another paper if you want to, right? You can release as much as you have to release. So as we think about patterns that we're ready to shift, Beliefs, we're ready to shift, release. Experiences that we're ready to be done and have something new. One of my experiences in the last year is um, when I retired from the University of Wisconsin system, I put together uh, four different schools to teach online. So I was teaching full time for a while. Colorado Springs, I was for a year and here in Payson. And there came a point about three years ago, I went, that's too much, so I let one go. About two years ago, I went, that's too much, so I let another one go. And this year, I let the last two go. I made a conscious choice to be done with that experience. To be done with that experience of reading papers, many of which were painful to read. <laughs> we're not well written papers, these are graduate students. Um, and I just, I just hit this point where, I'm, where I said, I'm done with that experience. I have done this enough times. So I'm at a place where some of you may be also of looking at what experiences am I now inviting into my life. I also finished the License Unity Teacher Path. Okay, so what am I ready to invite into my life? And I decided, even though I tried to talk myself out of it, I talked myself out of it fall quarter, but I'm not talking myself out of it this coming quarter, is to take the short story writing class taught by Pete Aleshire over here at the college. I can write, I've written, I've, I've published academic stuff, but I want to do creative writing. I want to do stories, right? And that's a whole different thing for me to become involved in. So I started doing some writing in November and December, and I started with a little writing group, and the writing group kind of fell apart. And I realized that even though teaching online, I had my own schedule, right? Teaching online. Nobody is saying you have to get up at 8, you have to read these papers. However, there was a schedule of what I needed to have done by certain dates. So there was still a schedule involved. Do I have a schedule with my writing? Nothing. Nothing. Zero schedule. So I came to the awareness that I needed this, I needed some kind of structure and some kind of, of um, schedule in order to bring this experience really into my life. Because I can think I'm bringing the experience in, but if I'm not really bringing it in, I'm still just thinking about bringing it in, right? So even though this is an evening class, and I say I don't want to go out in the evening, you know, what is that? What happened to me that I don't want to go off the evening anymore? Oh my God! What kind of a wuss am I? <laughs> right? So we have to have these talks with ourselves, these candid talks with ourselves, and say, I can do this, I'm going to do this. I'm going to structure this in my life, and, and this one week, one, one evening a week class is going to force me to write during the week and to have a try, right? And I'm also hoping that out of this class, we can build a group, right? A group that really wants to write and uh, do uh, constructive criticism of one another and help each other write rather than just say, oh, I like that, right? But to have people that will really listen to what I'm writing. May I, may I ask something? Yeah. What type of writing does I write? 
Okay, there you go. And you know, since I started mentioning this, I've had a couple other people show up. So I mentioned one of her sisters, or one of what? her teachers, one of her sisters, I was like, one of what? her teachers, <laughs> who's been working on a book for years and got stuck. <laughs> and and Rick writes, and you know, since I have actually put this out here, verbalizing other people, Ingrid, okay, other people go, well, I write, or I want to write, or I need some structure to do some writing. So I'm confident now that since I've made a real concrete move to invite this experience into my life, that it's going to keep going, right? But these are the kinds of steps that we want, to, that we need to take if we're really going to invite stuff in. Release old, I love this sentence, release old patterns that steal your dream. Isn't that interesting language? Old patterns that steal your dream. One of my patterns with the writing is, I can write tomorrow. <laughs> and what do I say the next day? I can write tomorrow. Okay, there's a pattern that would steal my dream. So do you have any of those patterns that are stealing your dream? We can have dreams at any age. CBS Sunday morning this morning, uh, what was his name? I want to say Mick Jones, I'm not sure if that's right. He was a, a, he is a guitarist with the rock group Foreigner, which I didn't really recognize the name of the group, but then they played some songs, and then I, I knew the songs. He was, he was out of the group over the last several years. He had some health issues, other things going on. He's 70 years old and he's back on tour. Okay, I need to see stories like this. Because I need to be reminded that chronological age is only a barrier if we let it be a barrier. And it is not. It does not have to be. But we make these choices, right? We go, oh, well, I'm 60, oh, I'm 65, oh, I'm 70. Hello, that's just an excuse. There was another big piece on I didn't watch because I just didn't want to go through the whole thing about excuses. <laughs> <laughs> about excuses that people come up with about why we don't do things, right? right. But that's just an excuse. Or chronological, chronological age is just an excuse. It doesn't matter. But we need to decide it doesn't matter. Release the old energy patterns. Now there's another thought, right? Energy. What kind of energy patterns have I begun to establish this year that maybe aren't serving me? Limiting emotions. Um, I, I drafted a Christmas message that Cindy sent out. You know, Cindy sends out all the stuff that mm -hmm. goes out on email. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, I, I actually gave a, a talk at Unity of Flagstaff last week. And while we were up there, it occurred, and, and the talk was joy to the world. And I went, joy, just open yourself. And I went, wow, is that limiting emotions? Don't we limit ourselves? By saying, oh, I, I don't really want to share that. I don't really want to talk about that. I don't really want to show that part of myself to anybody. Why not? Let's open ourselves up a little bit more, right? Release limiting emotions that hold you back and steal your dreams, goals, and happiness. I saw the angel in the marble and carved until I set it free. And that's what we're doing too, isn't it? We're releasing stuff, setting free our true selves. Okay. And then the, the second part of this morning is we will write a letter to ourselves as we invite in the new year. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So this is where we want to focus right now, and we'll jot down on our papers what we want to release. And I'm going to go outside, and I'm going to light our candles. We've got our burning bowl outside. I think that's where we want to be. So that's what we want to focus on, and then let me just draw attention to this. As you return to your seats, please, please just remain in stillness with your eyes closed, because we're all sort of in a state of meditation here. Affirm the divine in you, giving you birth into the fullness of your whole true self. So we'll be, I don't know if we have some soft music that we can play behind. Uh, you could run the Silent Night song if you wanted to. That's nice, nice soft behind music. So right now, that's where we're focusing, OK? So whenever anyone is ready, I'm going to be outside. Um, 